So the order that we're looking at here today is the vertisolic order. So this is the newest order in the Canadian system of soil classification. It was just added with the third edition in 1998. And so it is characterized by uh, the heavy clay soils. So typically a vertisolic soil has at least 60% clay and the, the type of clay that is associated with it is actually fairly important as well. Uh, it's dominantly a, a smectitic clay or dominated by smectite which is a, a, a clay that is characterized by its shrink swell characteristics and that is indeed one of the, the defining features of these soils. So the, the shrink swell refers to the uh, the expandable nature of the clay minerals, such that these soils, when they get wet, the the clay the clay expands, and when they dry out, it contracts. And so that ex expansion and contraction gives rise to the the characteristics of the, this particular profile. So the diagnostic features are what's referred to as a vertic horizon and also a slick inside horizon. And so it's these combination of these two um, evidences of the shrink swell occurring in the soil. Uh, together we refer to these uh, these processes as argili pedoturbation. So a big word that basically just means soil that's mixing because it's got a lot of clay in it. And so as the soils, uh, uh, particularly near the surface, the shrinks swell, we, you get a lot of these, uh, as, as the soils dry out through the course of the year, you get cracks forming. And so some of these cracks can be, be incredibly deep. In this profile that we'll be looking at today, we're seeing cracking all the way down to, to two meters. And in some cases, they can be really large as well. You can hear stories about uh, farmers losing wrenches down these cracks when they're trying to fix something in the field. And so they can be incredibly, uh, large cracks, but in addition to wrenches and other such treasures falling down the large cracks, you also get a lot of surface material that sloughs in from the surface. And so you can see uh, evidence of surface material moving down, or uh, in uh, these linear features moving down through the profile. And then as, in, as the soils wet up again then, the following spring typically, that clay then expands again, but now there's not as much space as there was before because you've had material moved in from the surface. And so the act of expanding further leads to, to this churning or mixing within the soil profile. So near the surface where the, the clay has uh, expanded or has contracted, materials fallen in and then when it re-expands it sort of churns up and so you see this subangular blocky uh, uh, um, units that are often uh, a little bit uh, less regularly oriented than we might see in, a, in another um, uh, clay horizon like we might see with a, a blocky BT horizon for example, uh, slightly more angular in terms of their arrangements and also often with some coatings on, on, the, on the, the faces of them associated with the material that's left in from the surface. In terms of the slick inside horizons, now often these are seen at a little bit greater depth because this is where we're seeing basically larger masses of soil as they expand sliding against each other and so creating these sort of sheer faces within the soil profile and to be considered a, an official slick inside horizon they have to be at least four square centimeters and certainly we're going to see some examples of these that are without a doubt uh, a good example of slick insides and we didn't need to get out the measuring tape to determine whether or not they fit that particular criteria. So in terms of the processes then, the, the major process of importance here is the argili pedoturbation and the resulting horizons associated with it. In terms of the soil forming factors, parent material is obviously a huge one. We need to have the, the nature of the, the minerals of the, of the parent material need to be that, that clay that is rich in smectite, at least 60% clay, very often a glacial lacustrine parent material, at least in the Canadian prairies. And then we would also, uh, uh, other processes of importance, basically, you know, as always, we need time, time for these things to develop. Uh, in terms of the vegetation, uh, we don't see as much evidence of the, uh, of the vegetation here, uh, in part because this particular soil that we're looking at is, is under agricultural production, but also because the, the nature of the argili pedoturbation means that the soils aren't, aren't uh, stable enough for there to be the same type of uh, uh, horizontal horizon development that we would normally see from materials moving uh, down through the profile. That churning tends to disrupt that uh, sort of more typical lateral horizon and development. The climate is going to be important. We need uh, these pronounced differences in terms of the, the, the opportunity for the soils to, to wet and swell and then to dry down. So that's going to be a, a significant contributing factor as well. 
And so those are some of the major factors that are of importance here uh, in terms of the, the development of this particular profile. So when we're looking at the vertisolic order, we are really are looking at these soils that are, are characterized by self-mulching or, or churning, which we call our geoli pedoturbation.